Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here to welcome you to episode number 16. It is Mother of Pearl and this one took me a few few tries to get it right and I'm hoping that I've got it down pat for you guys and that you'll all be successful doing this project. So let's get started. All right, starting off here, we have, I'm gonna move that out of the way for a moment. We have the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, a Signo Uniball white pen, a Pigma Micron, black uh, zero 01, and an eraser. A piece of card that I'm going to be drawing on, and that is Nina Coverstock, that's 110 pounds, and it is the Solar White, so it's a nice bright white paper that's got a little bit of weight to it because I like my cardstock. Now, people are going to say, hey, can you do this with the Crayola color pencils? And I'm going to st start off with saying, yes, you can. Here is one version of it with Crayola. It is not as bright and not as pigmented as the Faber-Castells, but these were also different colors. Some of them were the same, but pretty much these were different colors. These are as close a match to the Faber-Castells as I could get. For the Crayola, we would have pink, a light orange, lemon yellow, a turquoise, sky blue, and the gray. And this is the regular gray, not the cool gray. For the Faber-Castell pencils, what we are using is rose carmine, dark chrome yellow, the light yellow glaze, which in this particular lighting looks a little bit greenish, but it's not. It's a nice bright, bright yellow. The cobalt green, which is pretty much turquoise. The ultramarine and the warm gray. So that's what we're gonna use and we're good to get started. All right, to get started, what we're going to do is take the gray color and draw a circle-ish shape. Just a circle-ish. I'm not, I am not doing a perfect circle. I think I do want to slide something underneath of this so I'm not getting the texture from my paper underneath. There we go. So, and I'm just putting a tiny bit of shading, just basically just coloring along this edge, just right along it. And what that's doing to start off with is just give me a little boundary. Just a little boundary. Mother of Pearl is so pretty. It is not really a gemstone. It's not a stone, it's a shell. And I like that. I like that It's a beautiful thing. Hopefully the oyster lived its life and you just found this open shell laying on the beach somewhere and looked at it and it had this beautiful iridescence. I am not a big fan of eating oysters. I don't like the, I don't like the idea of them. I'm not a big, they're, you know, they're filters, they're, they're things that clean stuff. Kind of, I'm a little squeamish that way, I guess. All right, so now I want to take the ultramarine blue and I'm going to go in and inside on this white edge, just give a light light dusting of this color and really and truly this is very much like making a rainbow or looking at oil that's in water in the sunlight you know that summertime when the puddles would 
show up along the side of the roads from where people were doing their watering their lawns and there would be a little oil on the road and it would make those rainbowy shimmering shifting things things interesting Stephanie didn't know that it was a thing yeah I'm kind of silly today it's summer break Anyway, so Mother of Pearl, the inside of the shell is a protective coating that the oyster creates when it is, when it has irritants. It creates this nacre, N-A-C-R-E, I think is how it's spelled. And it is kind of like a um, kind of like putting an antacid in your own stomach it coats and it protects but this particular substance coats and protects and builds layers and layers and then it refracts light and reflects light and now I'm picking up the rose pink and I'm putting it along the edge of this blue and where that happens and I overlap a little bit here and there. We're going to get a purpley color a little bit. And when I bring in more of the blue again. And as you see here, I'm kind of doing this in in a not a scribble. They're sort of up and down lines. My particular uh, piece of shell here sort of has a grain to it. And this grain I can draw it right here. The grain is kind of going this way. Sort of heading in at this angle and going across. So I'm trying to keep my lines sort of going with the grain. And when the colors overlap and blend, if they're all going the same direction, they're going to slide in around each other like this. And then, and lock into each other and give you you know, secondary colors. That's how you get that sort of purpley color that sort of, sh that shows up. And I'm not, I'm not too worried about leaving spaces between my lines, but I want the lines to pretty much be going in the same direction. And I am not I am not trying to do a pattern per se. These are very organic colors. They shift and shimmer around in a very, you know, almost sparkly way. I'm going to throw in a nice patch of yellow there and a nice patch of this yellow down here. And I'm hoping that when I'm done editing and such, this really looks yellow and doesn't look green. And now I'm going to throw a little bit of this yellow along this edge here, which is going to give me some green spots starting to show up. And remember, we layer. We layer a lot. That is what we do. And by doing the layering, you're going to get sp just special surprises of color that show up. And I'm just coloring over the top. We will be going and using a Prismacolor White. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Prismacolor White to do some of our blending as we get more and more colors, more layers of color on here. All right, now I'm going to pick up this uh, chrome yellow, which is sort of an orangey tone, and throw a little bit of that in right along these edges. Still trying to stay kind of with my, my lines of color going up and down. And remember, this is sort of like that shifting rainbow that you will get in the water with oil on it. They don't always follow complete rules. It's your own 
piece of shell. The light's hitting it the way you're holding it. It's not the way I'm holding it necessarily. Yours does not have to look like mine. And I'm not growing forgers here. I'm growing artists. Growing artists that want to build their own skills, become their own inspiration sometimes. Then I'm picking up that turquoisey color. And remember that's cobalt green in this, in the uh, polychromo color pencils. And I'm just going in and I'm leaving this patch of white up here. It is going to end up being where the most strong highlight is. I might give it a little bit less of that white, but not by too much. Just soften it up a little bit. This is sort of a flat disc. It's not a domed rounded piece. The highlights are going to run along the the edges of the texture on this particular see there's that word again I'm using particular again but on this piece of shell there will be light highlights all right I like that I want to find my white where did I set it down? There it is. All right. So now I'm going to take this white and I'm just going to go in here and start. Well, first I'm going to just really lay in some of this white right into that circle. So that way I know that it's going to stay pretty much white. And now I am going to go and color over all of my colors. And I don't mind if they're blending into each other. I, in fact, I actually want them to sort of blend into each other. I want to blur those lines, blur the lines of where they are interacting with each other. We've got some of those really bright spots. Just blurring the lines. I'll be going back in and putting more colors on. But it's nice to have the muted tone. You know, we're starting out here and it's looking awfully like a beach ball. And just like in painting, sometimes our art, our drawings, what, when we work in layers, can have a bit of an ugly stage. <sighs> All right. So you see here, whoops, I'm raising it above my color, my light. There we go. All right. So there we are got that going. Put this back down here. So it doesn't really look like much of much right now. But it will. It will. Just trust. Just trust that it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now I'm going to take this soft, this soft gray and where this dot is, I'm going to sort of swing out and give it a little swirly line coming across. This is going to be the shadow in, pick up my pencil, the shadow in and then there will be a highlight on the top of that line. And then we will have another shadow in. It's just 
just this pretty little swirl that's coming off of that. In this shell, there's actually a little bit of doodling. And so I'm just going and working this in, and I wanted to do this on top of that white because I wanted those colors muted down some. to give it, to start working on the depth. There we go. All right. So then I have some other lines that I want to work in here. And now that gray is not the only color that will be going into the shadow. There will be some other colors going in but I want to work a few shadowy lines, a few shadow lines, just sort of scribble them in just, well, not really scribble, just sort of color them in softly. I'm not pressing super hard. I'm not trying to cut through the white. I'm just trying to get the gray to stick. And if you notice how these lines are going across, they're, they're sort of linking in. And the reason why is because this is all one piece of shell from one oyster. And these would be just the little lines inside for how it was attached, how the, the oyster held on to its shell, how it deposited its protective coatings, because things would get inside its shell and cause it irritation. It couldn't go down to the drugstore and pick some tummy coating products because its whole body is a tummy, pretty much. There we go. Ooh, that's starting to look pretty. That is starting to look pretty. So I think I'm going to make that turn into little straight lines, though. Give it a little bit of something different here. Leave that line round. All right. Now I want to take this blue, and it's the ultramarine blue, and lay this in right alongside the shadow, right over the top of all those other colors. Not pressing hard, just enough to transfer a bit of the color. And what this is doing is it's starting to en enhance the effect of three-dimensionality. It's starting to make this look like it's going up and down more, giving you that little ruffly edge on the inside. You could do the same thing for a potato chip one of those ones that has ridges. If you wanted to do a sp special little funny drawing. I've been known to do things like that. Do a fun little drawing. And when I share my doodles, you know, my drawings that are not the lessons, then I'm just sharing it. It's not too, um, I'm not showing off. At least I hope I no, don't give that impression that I'm showing off. All I'm doing is sharing fun things that, you know, my husband and I will have our little art games and we will have fun playing. And sometimes it's nice to, 
to share our games with other people because they might like to play too. And everyone comes at it at their own place. We all have our own skills. We all started from the beginning and it takes time to develop skills. So again, don't, don't worry if your thing doesn't look like my thing. It shouldn't. It should look like yours. And if it doesn't have the something about it that you want it to look like, then figure out what it is that's not working for you. Figure out what it is that's not working and then work on that. I watched a really good video by a fellow YouTuber over on Painting with Jane. She's been doing these great vlogs I've really been impressed by those. And she did one not too long ago about getting discouraged or ruining your confidence with painting or art in general. And I really, I believe wholeheartedly what she was saying, which is don't talk bad about your art. If there's something you don't like, you work on that specific skill. Don't say, I can't draw. Say, I have a hard time with this one thing right now. Work on that one thing. Practice it. And don't practice it on the most expensive piece of paper or the most expensive canvas. Give yourself permission to practice and have that practice be on something that can just, you can be as free as you want to be on it. And I'm just going here and just putting some other little lines in every once in a while. That got a little bit dark there. And so I'm going to grab the white and I'm just going to go like this. Since we have that layer of white underneath, the nice thing about it is you can use a white pencil to kind of erase a little bit. Basically, you're not erasing, you're just blending it out. But it's time to blend out anyway. I want to put white next to the next to those dark lines to help build that highlight to say it goes up and then it goes down, it goes up and then it goes down. Gives you variations in your colors. We're still working those Those colors that are underneath now, you see how they're getting a bit more muted, they're getting softer. They're making it just feel a little more dimensional. <sighs> And I'm sorry, this one is taking a little bit longer to do, but we're just about done with it. I'm going to take my white uniball pen and I want to go in and start giving it some much more highlight on some of those spots. We're going to do a little bit of blotting with our fingertip also to make some of those lines not as thick. And if you draw with your pen and sort of lift up, you're going to not have a sudden stop. 
it's going to give a natural taper to the edge. And I am barely touching this paper with this pen. Barely touching. And by barely touching, it allows the ink to roll out of the pen nib and it doesn't scratch into the paper. It's just floating on top. Just floating on top. We're going to go just like this. Just touching the edge and just dragging it across very lightly. Very, very lightly. And I want to give it a little bit more white coming out this way on the other side of that shadow. Just like that. Just like that. All right. Give it... No, I don't want to do too much of this white. I don't want to outline every single, all the way along every single line because light doesn't hit that way. Out here at the end, I'm actually just going to sort of blot it just a little bit. And you know, I don't really like that one so much, so I'm just going to scrape it off. I don't like that one so much. Because remember, it's all on top of wax or oil-based stuff now. So this white is just sitting on top. It doesn't ever bond. All right, so how's that? Pretty good, I think. Pretty good, I think. I'm going to maybe... Actually, maybe not that one. Maybe this one. And if your pen sort of clogs up, run it off on another piece of paper. Run it off on some other paper. I'm just sort of thickening up the ends on some of these swirly bits. Just a little bit. I'm bringing it around. There we go. Just a little bit. Just because the light is kind of pooling in this photograph that I've got in front of me. It sort of pools a little bit. And, but I'm not really a fan of that one on the outside edge. <laughs> While it is still wet, you can just wipe it with your finger and it just rolls right off. Okay, I think that's good. I think we have Mother of Pearl and it's soft, it's shimmering. All right, so now we've got our Micron pen. We're going to start doing our doodle around this particular. Yeah, you know that when I say that word, I smile every time now because it's like, oh, really, Stephanie, you're saying it again? If there's ever a drinking game based on deliberately creative, that's going to be in there, I'm sure. And if you notice, my lines are not super crisp and clean. They're wobbly. They're a little bit organic. And that's what you tell people. If your lines are wobbly and they, you notice that they're wobbling, you're just making organic lines. And especially when we're doing something like this with a, a shell, which is very organic, what can anybody say? I mean, really. Let's see. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I've been doing some different designs, and I'm, 
I'm like going, hmm, I think I kind of like this design, which is sort of a petal going all the way around. pretty close and then I am going to do another petal like this which gives us almost that uh, almost a spirograph type circle art look and then I think I'm going to do a double line here that double line is going to go to the inside because it's kind of thick and yeah that one can come to the outside and there all right, and then I think actually what that's going to do is I'm going to go in and do sort of a little fan type line shape thing. I'm making this up as we go along, guys. I am not looking at a um, at a book of designs or anything. You can. You most certainly can look at books of designs. There's all kinds of them out there. You can start creating your own book of designs when you see something you like, a texture or a pattern. You can start putting those patterns down into a, your own book of designs. And I have done that. Um, one of the things that happens as you draw and as you do art is you start developing a visual vocabulary. You start developing a vocabulary of pictures and symbols, shapes and designs that stay in your head that you can call up and you can say, oh, I want to do this or I think that would be pretty. And by doing that, you've, you're ingraining those in your brain. You're stretching your brain. You're creating, you're creating opportunities for your brain to continue growing. And as we all get older, because even if you're 12 years old, even if you're six years old, you're going to get older. You're going to get older and you want your brain to stay flexible and you want to exercise it. And this is awesome exercise for your brain. Awesome exercise for your brain. All right. So let's see, what do I want to do now? I think I am going to make little inverted V's that are going to create these long pointy petals. Long pointy petals. And then I think I want to do these same little scallops on the outsides. I think they're going to get about four bumps each is what I'm doing. You could have three bumps. You could have two. You could say, eh, I don't want any bumpies on mine. Perfectly fine. That's why you are the artist and you can make those decisions about your art. That one got five bumps. 
and that one got four. I have been so impressed with all of the beautiful stones and gems and doodles that I've been seeing people do off of these videos. If you do any of the artwork and want to share, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go over to Facebook and go to the Deliberately Creative page. Go ahead and click Join, and then you can post pictures there. And as I see them be posted, I will share them into the main page of the group, so that way everybody will be able to see them. We are a very inclusive group. We have people of all levels that are playing with us. We have people of all ages, people of all skills. It's a very safe and, and um, like I said, an inclusive environment. You can also share on Instagram if you like doing Instagram and you, or you don't like going on Facebook. You can share to Instagram. Just make sure that you tag at deliberately underscore creative and I have the I have that showing up on the screen right now so that you can see what it looks like just make sure that you tag me so I can find your your work and comment and favorite because I like to do that I like, I like just the community that we have here. We are so lucky in art to have such a loving and caring community of people. If you like this video, please click like and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can be notified when new videos go up. I have a new video that goes up every Monday unless something happens but so far I've made it several well several months now where I've had a video go up every Monday. If you stick around longer than a minute you'll see that every once in a while I post a special episode that just sort of pops up. It just sort of shows up. And it's not necessarily a doodle gem. My special episodes tend to be whatever happens to hit my fancy at the time. And if I'm doing um, art games or doodle games with my husband, sometimes I'll share those. I have a an open art game that's running right now that is the hashtag two things doodle challenge that you just find two things and doodle it put something together put two things together and take a look at them see if it's something that makes you think of something else um, it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun I'm trying to see what I'm going to do here I think I am going to go swirly this way and a swirly this way. And I'm getting close to being done with this. You don't have to go as far as I'm going. You can make this as intricate and detailed or as simple and elegant as you like. And I do. I like that one. And I'm not worried. I just went over that space up above. No big deal. 
Remember, we are doodling and we are developing our visual vocabularies. And when you were learning how to speak English or whatever your native language is, you started out with basic sounds. You didn't start off being able to recite your your letters. You didn't start off with knowing how to read a book. You started out with making basic sounds. And I think of doodling as learning how to make the basics of drawing. Doodling is just developing basic sounds and shapes and size relationships. That's kind of fun. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I have probably way over gone my time with you guys. I'm having fun. I hope you did. I hope you've had fun with this. Now, I may continue going on and doodling. And I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. You don't have to stick around if you don't want to. You can go out and do something creative. Share that creativity with others. If you've got kids home from the for their summer holidays or winter holidays, depending on where you are in the world. Grab some paper, grab some pens, some crayons, just do some doodling. Make a, make a jam, make some memories, and do something creative. All right, guys. Get out there. Take care of yourselves.